Texas, number 16, Lauren Harrington. Of this Miller Senior Passage in Long Beach, California, number 18, Claire Oates. A defender, a junior captain, Lone Tree, Colorado, number 11, Haley Thompson. In goal, a junior from Sacramento, California, number one, Katie Brown. A defender, a sophomore from Belleville, Ontario, Canada, number two, Catherine Heron. A defender, a sophomore from South Lake, Texas, number seven, Mary Meehan. A forward, a junior from Frisco, Texas, number 10, Blair Fork. A midfielder, a freshman from Markham, Ontario, Canada, number 13, Isabel Nashby. A forward, a freshman from Fort Worth, Texas, number 14, Hannah Owens. A forward, a sophomore from Arlington, Texas, number 20, Ali Thornton. And a defender of sophomore from Brooklyn, Wisconsin, number 23, Jessica Cooley. The head coach for SMU is Chris Petrucelli. Assistant coach is Nicole Nelson, Matt Cosgriff, and Ricky Clark. And now, here's the starting lineup for your Utah Huskies. The midfielder, senior captain from West Point, Connecticut, number 33, Sabrina Tuol. In goal, senior captain from Farmington, Connecticut, number 25, Courtney Hofer. A midfielder, a sophomore from this shore, Long Island, New York, number 2, Sophia Leo. And forward, a freshman from Valley Stream, Long Island, New York, number three, Normally Everlong. A junior, a defender from Stanford, Connecticut, number 12, Heidi Drew. A defender, a sophomore from Saddle River, New Jersey, number 17, Kristen Vincent a defender, a junior from Richfield, Connecticut, number 19, Leanne Keegan. A midfielder, a junior from Vienna, Germany, number 21, Vivian Pyle. A forward, a freshman from Temecula, New York, number 23, Sophia. Danico Kolchitsky! A midfielder, a sophomore from Riverdale, New Jersey, number 24, Aaron Spolane! And a defender, a freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, number 77, Cage Weibel! The head coach for your Huskies is Lynn Sanderis. Associate head coach, Margaret Rodriguez. Associate head coach, Zach Shaw. At this time, fans, we ask that you please no. rise and remove your hats as we honor America no. and those defending no, our freedoms here. with the singing of our national no, anthem. Here. Performing the anthem this evening, please welcome Ooh, you UConn student <laughs> Joanna <laughs> Mallory. Last time SMU and UConn faced off, there was a conference championship on the line. Tonight, both of these teams need a victory with just five games remaining in the regular season. Take a look at the updated conference standings in the American Athletic. Everyone looking up to the two Florida schools occupying the first and second spots. Well, UConn sitting mid-table right now. This is going to be a big challenge for them today to close the distance. 
Good evening and welcome to Maroney Stadium on the campus of the University of Connecticut in stores. Alongside Roland Garensway, I'm Kit McConico. A very important match for both of these two teams. SMU has never beaten UConn in six matches played. UConn looking to make it seven in a row tonight as we take a look at the keys for tonight's matchup first for the visitors. Well, for SMU, it's to stay focused for 90 minutes. The Mustangs seem to switch off at times. They need to be completely tuned in as UConn come into this match looking to close the distance between them and the top teams in the conference. They also need to be relentless in defense. When SMU pours forward an attack, they can be susceptible to the counter. So defending as a team is going to be a huge factor in this match. And now the keys for the home team. Well, for UConn, it's going to be to get tough mentally and physically. The, Hus the Huskies have been inconsistent so far this season, so they need to be mentally resilient today and tenacious on and off the ball. But part of that tenacity is leaving everything on the field. These players must accept nothing less than three points to help build momentum heading into the last games of the season. And our key players for tonight's matchup first for the Mustangs. Well, it's actually going to be the absence of Vanessa Valadez. We just found out moments ago she's out injured for this match. She's had five goals and nine starts this season. She's going to be a big miss for the Mustangs. And the key player for the Huskies. Well, it's going to be Vivian Bile. Uh, she's got three goals and three assists and 13 starts. She's very tidy on the ball, has a high soccer IQ. Part of that comes from being a member of multiple German women's youth national teams. This young lady brings a wealth of experience to this Husky side. We'll have the opening kickoff from stores when we return on the American Digital Network. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. Powerful. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? The, the limb comes off. How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Welcome you back to Maroney Stadium here in stores for tonight's American Athletic Conference women's soccer matchup featuring the visiting SMU Mustangs and the Yukon Huskies. SMU a tough year looking for their first victory in conference play coming off their first tournament appearance since 2006 a year ago. UConn, they were last year's regular season and tournament champion in the American Athletic Conference. They're looking up the table. They need a victory today and three points if they're going to get in this conference conversation. Well, I'd say, you know, coming off of a positive season last season for both these clubs, you know, SMU not really living up to expectation. And, you know, UConn up there, all the accolades last year, you know, sort of sitting middle of the table. They've got some time, though. Uh, again, they're going to look to close the distance with this game and gain some momentum going towards the end of the season. Breast Cancer Awareness Month and the Huskies of UConn doing their part as they will be in the pink jerseys tonight raising money and doing their best they can to raise awareness of that insidious disease that unfortunately affects far too many of us. So the home team in the pink tops, the visitors will be in the whites making the trip up from Texas. Should be a good one. Perfect evening tonight in Connecticut. These two teams know they need a victory with just five games remaining in the regular season here in the American Athletic Conference. Two great coaches, two men that are very well known in women's soccer circles. Longtime head coach of the Huskies, Lynn Sanceris. He has been there for 37 years. He himself a graduate of the University of Connecticut. And his counterpart, Chris Petroselli, his sixth year as the head coach of the Mustangs, the two-time National Coach of the Year and 1995 National Championship coach. Make no, make no mistake, both these teams have the pedigree uh, to achieve more than what they've done so far this season. It's going to be competitive. You talk, I mentioned Petroselli. What a job he has done. Two-time National Coach of the Year. He has been absolutely fantastic. That Power 6 win back on the 18th of August. Well, things have been tough sledding recently for SMU. In fact, they have not picked up a victory in the month of October. It's been very a very tough month indeed. You know, Arkansas is no slouch, so that's nothing to scoff at. That's a big win. 
Uh, but I think, you know, not sure what their conference uh, destinies are for the rest of this season, but they'll want to get the W and sort of gain some momentum going into maybe next season. Woody Brown, the junior from Sacramento, gets the start in goal for the Mustangs. Both teams starting things off with a 3-3-4 formation. And we are underway from Stores Maroney Stadium. A beautiful evening and so glad you could join us on the American Digital Network. Rolling a lot of times these matches turn out to be the most entertaining matches with a lot on the line. SMU, obviously, they're looking for a win. And UConn, three points would do them a great service moving up the table. Absolutely. Like, like we said, they're sitting mid-table and they think they deserve, you know, they, they know they're a better team than what they've been performing so uh, so far this season. You know, they've, they've been a, a bit inconsistent and maybe not playing up to their potential. So, again, they're just trying to get the W, get three points and gain some momentum. We're seeing SMU so far just really trying to possess the ball and really pour forward. You know, they haven't had any trouble scoring this season. Uh, but like we said sort of in the intro, they can get they can be uh, susceptible to the counterattack. So we'll see if UConn uh, takes advantage of that today. Najmi wins the corner. The first set piece will go to the visitors. Well done by the Canadian Isabel Nashmi, the freshman from Ontario. And we'll see if the Mustangs can find the opener via the corner. We see SMU being very aggressive so far and already a, the first set piece in the first minute and a half. So we'll see if they can be dangerous from this. Comes in from Thorpe, the junior, the Metroplex product pressed over great goalkeeping and it had to be fantastic job from Courtney Hoffman. Well, that was a dangerous corner kick and again, bringing out the best in the goalkeeper. She does well to tip it over the bar, but again, just concedes another corner. SMU looking to go up early today. Off for the senior, the Connecticut native, doing a great job. But now the corner coming the other way, this time off the boot of Thompson. Thompson just sends it into the side netting, poorly taken in the goal kick coming for the Huskies. So far, it's been SMU with all of the possession. And then unfortunately, there from the goalkeeper, just kicks it straight out. That's not a good sign. Maybe a little bit of, you know, beginning of the game jitters. We're seeing the midfield of SMU really do well and keep possession. SMU certainly looking for a bit of confidence. It has been a tough season for the Mustangs. See if they can find an early goal. That would go a long way. Huskies defense coming back, wins it back momentarily. That's good hustle there. Kept in by Nashmi. Nashmi already a factor early in this one. And they can see another corner, it looks like. It will indeed be a corner. So SMU dangerous early on. Their third mm -hmm. set piece just three minutes in. We're seeing them put a lot of pressure on that uh, UConn back line. I like the way their style has been so far. They've been really trying to play the ball on the ground and play proper football. Thorpe, the Frisco native, puts it onto the roof. And the second corner kick in a row that SMU has not put in play. Well, it's unfortunate they haven't been able to take advantage of these three few opportunities early on. They could have really done uh, you know, a good job to put UConn even more on their heels. UConn facing the two Texas teams in the American Athletic Conference. They will take on Houston on Sunday, but right now, all eyes on SMU. Looking to clear it away. SMU doing a good job keeping high pressure, trying to win it back in the Huskies' end. Long throw down the sideline. And into touch it goes. Another UConn throw. Dude, I got a pole here. I got a pole here. At the edge of the box, Huskies send it in. With that one just finding itself over the end line. And so both teams, some opportunities, but neither able to put the ball into a dangerous area. Right, you know, some, I mean, that was a bit of a half chance, but you got to, 
you know, be consistent with the quality of your service. You know, that neither team has really put in any any semblance of a dangerous ball so far. Five minutes in, still no score. Neither team able to put their mark on this one early on. Thompson with the throw for the Mustangs. Out it goes. She'll have another opportunity. Thompson, one of the captains. The junior from Colorado. Bits schizophrenic early on. Neither team able to take much possession. Good ball looking in. Now an opportunity here for the Mustangs if they can square it. All read that time, the freshman from Fort Worth battling. But again, the Huskies defense, Ben, but don't break early on. You know, I like the style of SMU so far. They've been putting a, some high pressure on UConn and really looking to play the ball to feet. I think, think if they can keep a bit more possession, uh, they'll be able to sort of dismantle this UConn defense over time. So far, UConn has been unable to get the ball up top. UConn sort of results, resor uh, resorting, excuse me, uh, to some long ball soccer. Maybe Laura, the freshman from New York, was the intended target, but unable to find her. Now an opportunity here, some space for the Huskies attack. Continuing the run, looking to send it in. And Evelard with the header. Ball played in, and the Huskies have found the opener against the run of play. One to nothing, UConn. Well, that wasn't the best ball in, but looks like Evelar was just back post unmarked. She gets the one nil lead. We're gonna see it here. It was the chip ball in, took a deflection. Evelard all her all alone back post. Just to head that ball just over the line. The freshman Evelard with the goal. The young lady from Valley Stream, New York. The assist coming from the sophomore Spilani. And it is one to nothing. UConn had seen very little of the ball. Hadn't had much possession, but the Huskies wasting no time with that opportunity. We're seeing, I think, you know, sort of what's been the problem with SMU over the course of the season. It's not for a lack of talent that they're near the bottom of the conference table. Uh, it's their defensive fragility. Roland, one thing you mentioned to me when you and I were speaking about this match earlier this week is that SMU can score goals. It hasn't been the offense. It's been the defense that's been the Achilles heel for the Mustangs, and we see it right there. Absolutely. You see just early on the amount of talent these girls have. They have nice, a nice first touch. They're really offensive-minded. They want to get forward and be dangerous. But we're seeing here just a simple chip ball in. You know, it wasn't really whipped in with much pace, but you're seeing Avalar just being unmarked in the box and uh, everyone being late to the ball. So very, very unfortunate for such a talented squad. Huskies averaging just over a goal per match, now 17 in 14 matches on the season for UConn. Now the pressure really on the visitors from Dallas. They were looking good early on, had possession, had some opportunities, but two poorly taken corner kicks, not putting any pressure on the Huskies' defense and their goalkeeper, and it's the home team who's found the opener. Now it appears SMU, the team resorting to the long ball, but a chance here. That one given away in a dangerous area. No trouble for the goalkeeper, Hoffer. Again, they've been put, they've been putting a, a a nice high press so far. They just need to be able to get back and defend once UConn uh, gets possession back. Harrington tried to win it back, went to ground, but couldn't get a piece of it. Good backtracking defensively from Thorpe. She's able to come up with it for SMU. Another long ball, easily won by UConn. A 
Unable to keep it in. Came off the boot of Meehan, the sophomore, another Metroplex product, former South Lake Carroll Dragon. Very well known athletic program there in the Dallas Fort Worth metro area. Well, it's surprising to see this SMU again just sitting at the bottom of that table as so much talent comes out of that area of Texas. And a lot of that talent headed to Highland Park and there to that SMU campus. You look at that roster, a lot of talent from the state. They have some from north of the border as well. But if you're SMU, you have a luxury of being able to recruit close to home. UConn, likewise, a lot of players from that New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area. Huskies, a chance here. Ball played outside. Keegan's coming up. Now sends it to the top of the box, and that went well over the crossbar. That was the best spell of play so far for UConn. They played some nice football, spreading the ball wide, eventually getting across with the left foot, as we're going to see it here. And you see the ball played in from Keegan's, the junior from Connecticut. A good idea, but the shot not forcing Brown into a save. I like the decision to take that first time. She's got to get her head and chest over the bar, over the ball, excuse me. And uh, I think that would be, you know, obviously just a better shot. And in that instance, just leaning back a little bit too far. Thornton battling. And off of Thornton, the throw for the Huskies. Not quite the season that SMU fans had anticipated after making it to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 10 years a year ago. They brought back 17, including nine starters from last year's team, but still looking for their first win in conference play. Down the line stays in, eventually knocked out. SMU needs to get the ball, have some possession, try to find the form that they had early in this one when they were putting pressure on the Huskies. Headed up the field, able to find an opening. SMU with an opportunity here. And the shot well off the mark, came off the boot of Allred, the freshman from Fort Worth, and Hannah Allred knew she should have done better. Well, that's a big opportunity for SMU and Allred, just taking a touch uh, wide of the goal instead of going right at the goal. It was decent defensive work from UConn, but that was a big opportunity for SMU, and the freshman just needed a little bit more composure in the final third there. Had a teammate running with her, could have tried to play it into her path, instead took the shot. Well, she took a touch outside of the box, the frame of the goal, so that, that's always going to you know, make it a bit more difficult for you to even get a shot on goal. Good give and go. Nashmi, the intended target. So far, Isabel Nashmi has been dangerous. They've been able to find number 13 in white. Sent in by Thompson. Headed away, but not a teammate there. That's not a bad ball from Thompson. All the way back to the goal scorer, Evelard, and she loses it. That was good defensive pressure. Okay. Back and forth, scattered, I think is the best way to put it from both of these teams. Seen fleeting glances. Both teams looking good at times, but neither able to really string together more than a few passes. And I think really SMU have had the better opportunities. I think UConn goal, UConn's goal, excuse me, was inexcusable defensively from SMU. And they've had, you know, they've just had a fast break. They just had a counterattack opportunity. They've had three corners so far that they haven't taken advantage of. But that's part of what the game's about is taking, taking control of your own destiny and taking advantage of those, those chances that you have. And, UConn's the one that's, that's done that so far. That's what the good teams do. They take advantage when the opportunities present themselves. Right 
Heading the other way, Cooley, the sophomore from Wisconsin. Up the line, finds a teammate. Oh, good ball, looking for the diagonal ball to the top of the box, but well read by the Huskies. Everyone playing up the pitch right now for SMU. Trying to find the equalizer. We'll see if that leaves them exposed at the back with the counterattack. And this may be it. Bile. Vivian Bile, the junior from Germany, mentioned in the open. And Roland, what an impressive resume. Absolutely. Representing Germany at the U15, U17, U19 levels. A veteran of a Youth World Cup. She's got tons of experience, and, you know, she you saw her there take a nice first touch and do well to keep possession, and eventually the ball goes out for a throw, and it's a dangerous one. Long throw into the box, cleared away. Now SMU, if they can get numbers forward, maybe with a chance. With SMU, I think Coach Petroselli, I love his uh, sort of tenacity in making his team, you know, want to attack and get forward. I think it's so far with them, with them this season, it's been a lack of execution and just defensive fragility. Thorpe looking for help now in the corner. Two defenders there, tries to win the corner. Still in play and finally into touch for a Mustangs throw. Always entertaining the teams from Coach Petroselli. Such a great career as a player and as a coach. There's two Division Three titles. Beginning of his playing career back at UNC Greensboro. And winning titles as a coach as well. There is the man we mentioned him and well known in all soccer circles. Certainly does not need an introduction. Twenty seven years as a head coach, winning just under seventy percent of his games. And that is uh, well over the five hundred mark. His counterpart has won over five hundred games in Lynn Santiris. Top of the box, oh, heavy touch, just couldn't settle it. The opportunity goes begging for SMU. That was Lauren Harrington who almost got on the end of that one. That was an, a decent long ball, and she just couldn't quite control. There is the man, 37 years the head coach of the Huskies, Lynn Santiris. Look at what he has done, 27 NCAA national tournaments. They made the tournament 26 straight years from 1982 to 2007. UConn, no stranger to dynasties in women's sports. <laughs> it's something they know very well in stores. His team unbeaten 8-0-1 last year in conference, the regular season and tournament champion. Right now, they, look, they will have to win out if they're going to have a chance to repeat as the regular season American Athletic Conference women's soccer champion. That speaks to the level here we've seen in conference play, certainly from USF, from UCF, but from everyone from top to bottom. Absolutely. I mean, every game I've seen so far with you and with uh, other broadcasters has been entertaining. You know, it's, this is a great conference and, you know, one that uh, everyone should be paying attention to across the country. Throw to SMU. Thompson quickly back into play. Rowan, do you like to see one of these teams just take a deep breath, try to settle things a bit? Nice long throw down the sideline. Played up, but no one there in white. UConn taking the opportunity to bring a few numbers forward, trying to reinforce the attack, and that pass off the mark. Goal kick. 
It's unfortunate for SMU. They've been the most dangerous of the two teams. And so far, besides that one snafu, they've sort of dealt with everything UConn has thrown at them. As you correctly said, that is the game. Everything can be going your way for 89 minutes and 59 seconds, but that one second can be enough to give you the loss. UConn now outside again, using the width very well, finding space. Too heavy, the final touch, couldn't keep it in play. And you see the reaction. They've been finding a lot of space down the right-hand side of the attack. Can maybe probably assume they've seen something that they can key on. Maybe attacking the left back of SMU. And I think that was Sabrina Toole that time, the senior from Westport, exploiting that right flank. Fortuitously finding itself with the Mustangs. UConn will have the throw right in front of the SMU bench. Certainly can see why Thompson, the junior from Colorado, one that wears the captain's armband for SMU. Evelar, the goal scorer, looking for some space, cuts it back, has it knocked away, and out. UConn keeps the throw. Egan's looking for one of these long throws into the box, trying to find the head of a teammate. Instead takes it short to Evelard and well read by SMU defensively. All red, head up, the freshman. SMU has some space on the far side, but a poor ball over the head of the intended target. Halfway through the first 45 minutes. Alongside Roland Garen's OM, Kit McConico, a very warm welcome to you joining us on the American Digital Network. Five matches remaining in regular season conference play. And three points would serve one of these teams very well. SMU looking for their first win of the season in conference. And UConn trying to make their way up from their mid-table spot. That's a great touch from Evelard there. I like her mentality. She's always looking to get forward, uh, press that back line, and force them into mistakes. Reads the ball well, has good height. Imagine always dangerous in the air is the five foot eight inch freshman. And that one, a difficult touch taken off the bounce and over the crossbar. Coming up, beautiful play that time and a difficult strike. Well, again, it's just a lack of, you know, you know, Attention to detail, really, leaving a player back post all alone by herself. That could have easily been 2-0 for UConn. Unfortunately, the half volley doesn't come off. You see the quality of UConn. The half chance, almost making it 2 to nothing. This is the left back of SMU just really switching off there, not paying attention and not making sure she's man marking. Evelard, two defenders coming to close her down. Evelard continues her run, finally knocked away. Looks like it's going to be a free kick. It looks like Evelard was held back by two SMU defenders. That's a decent call there from the referee. Now a free kick coming in a dangerous area is Vivian Bile. The German Youth International over to take it. I was up. I was out of the ball. Good.
Good service from Bile, bouncing into the six-yard box. No one getting on the end of it, and Brown ultimately scooping it up. But a great opportunity for UConn. That was actually uh, the perfect service. That's the service that you want on that free kick from that point in the field. You're going to see it here. She whips it in with pace. It's right in between the penalty area and the six-yard box. Unfortunately for UConn, no one can get on the end of it. But that is the kind of service that Bile can deliver, and that's the kind that you want in that situation. Bile unable to find a teammate, stays one to nothing, and now a free kick the other way for SMU, just on their side of midfield. SMU was the aggressor early on, but after conceding the first goal, they have dropped back defensively and not looked nearly as dangerous. I'd like to see them find the form they had early on, where they were the aggressor, and they were putting the pressure on UConn. They're still trying to, but I think they're sort of respecting UConn's uh, attack a little bit more often. They seem to be, you know, UConn have, haven't really attacked very often, but they have been dangerous in the few forays forward. Avalard. Well defended that time. Oates able to come up with it. Excuse me, rather, Heron, the sophomore, another Canadian. Now Oates gives it away. Evelard tried to swing it to the near side. Big collision. Referee says play on, and UConn comes up with it. It's a great hustle from Nashmi, though. Now Thornton down the sideline has some room to run. But a poor final ball. We've seen that a few times from SMU. The buildup has been there, but the final ball not on target. I mean, you saw what she was trying to do. She was trying to whip that ball into her center forward. Just couldn't quite get her foot around it, and it goes out for a goal kick. But one thing both teams have done well is get their fullbacks forward to be dangerous. Offer puts it back into play, just under 18 minutes remaining in the first half. That one coming off the face that time of Sophia Danico, freshman <laughs> from Chappaqua, New York. Take another look. That's a tough one. Not even trying to get in the way of that one, just happened to be there. Two storied programs in men's and women's soccer, the Huskies and the Mustangs. I think you can safely say not the year that either one of these programs was looking for. Well, after such a dominant year last season for UConn. As we see a dangerous opportunity here. That one poked away. Got a hand to it. Did Hoffer. And she may have gotten a Mustang in the process. Play continues. What a chance that was. A dangerous ball coming right to the top of the 18. It was a very dangerous 50-50 ball there. Hard to say who actually won out on that one. I guess it's UConn as they're on the attack now. Bile looking for Evelard. Now Oates. Oates was the freshman of the year in conference. Now the senior from Long Beach. Closed down and the free kick coming for UConn. Bolani, the midfielder with two Mustangs on either side. And the whistle blows and rightfully so. Now it's Nashmi committing the foul there. She tries to go shoulder to shoulder, but unfortunately goes through the back. And obviously a free kick. Good decision making there from the goalkeeper to punch away. Unfortunately couldn't get a full touch on it. And Evelard goes over the post again. The Brown comes off the line, got just enough of it. Take another look. Yeah, great work from Brown colliding with her teammate. 
And you see her hesitate. Unfortunately, she needs to be a bit more decisive in her box. Really do command her box and make it hers. If she had you know, been a bit more decisive, she could have just caught that, I think. We now introduce the third member of our broadcast crew. Toss it down the sideline to Scott Sudikoff. Thank you very much, Kid. And of course, here you see for UConn, another goal from a freshman with Evelard putting in the goal off that cross in that first half in the first seven minutes of this first half. And I talked to Coach Santeris before the game. He's saying that the young players are starting to learn how to win. Obviously, a growing experience for this UConn team, losing its top three scorers from last year, losing its starting goalie, was trying to find its way. And now with this early 1-0 lead on SMU. Thanks, Scott. All right, guys, back to you. Thanks, Scott, for that sideline report. Just under 16 minutes remaining in the first half. Mustangs looking for the equalizer before the break. They dominated the first five minutes, but the goal came against the run of play from UConn. Spilani with the assist. Evelard, the freshman, with the goal. A great header coming in. Able to catch Brown trying to play the near post. Evelard. Aforementioned goal scorer committing the foul and the free kick for the Mustangs. We're going to see it here. She comes straight through the back. It's actually a quite dangerous tackle. She really went in there for her. I've not seen a yellow card issued thus far, and that was the best case. It's probably one if I've ever seen it. Mary Meehan, sophomore defender taken out from behind, but the referee keeping his cards in his pocket for the time being. It's a decent flicked on header there, but that's good goalkeeping there from UConn. Well, Hoffer sending her troops forward. Again, the Huskies in the pink tops, not their traditional Navy. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, raising funds and awareness. Evelard able to get to it, keeps it from going over the inline. Now tries to square it, knocked away, well defended by the Mustangs, but UConn still with possession. And out it goes for a Huskies corner. That was good work from Evelard there. Fortunately, just couldn't quite get a quality ball into the box there. Another dangerous opportunity for UConn. Let's see if they can go 2 0 up before the half. Bile over to take it. Well placed, the in swinger. Again, another another perfectly placed ball that uh, UConn couldn't take advantage of. All the way back it goes. Evelard looking to flick it on, but no teammate making a run. Free kick to Brown as the flag was up for offside. Physicality really amping up in the last few minutes. And a change, SMU making the first change. Lauren Harrington coming off, and it will be Emily Cope coming on. Cope, the sophomore midfielder from Vail, Colorado. One of the three changes being made. We'll see if we can get the other two. It'd be good to get some fresh legs in there for SMU. Maybe pick up the intensity a bit. Haley Bishop also coming on, the sophomore from Austin Westlake High School. And Hannah Fleet, the sophomore from Halifax, Nova Scotia. That's a big throw there. Fortunately, comes to nothing for UConn. Yeah, we've seen those all game from Leanne Keegan's down the line or into the box. Can certainly put it where she wants it. Chance here for UConn. Possibly a counterattack opportunity. 
Doing a good job getting numbers forward. Have some width. A shot optimistic at best. No trouble for Brown. Well, she didn't have very many options, so I don't mind that that uh, that decision to take take the shot there. We're gonna see her here. She's pulling forward. Not many players. Not many teammates around her. She takes a shot, and it's not that far off, really. I may have not given Spawn enough credit there. Had the opportunity. Didn't have anyone running with her. And it was closer than it appeared initially. The Mustangs looked like they were going to go the other way, but lost possession. Looking to return the pass down the sideline. Cooley with the throw, up to Oates. Ooh, almost a nice one-two there, but good defense there from UConn. Fleet wisely sends it back, and the Mustangs retain possession. Well defended coming back that time. That's good hustle. Nice tracking back there. And Keegan's able to get to it. Bishop looking to get involved. Everyone back defending now for the for the Huskies, I should say. Another long ball into the box. No trouble for Hoffer. And I know you, Roland, having worked with you enough and know your history as a player, you would much prefer the ball be played to feet. It's just a difficult ball coming over the top. You've got to weight it perfectly to get your teammate to it before the goalkeeper can get to it. Absolutely. I, you know, I think uh, early on SMU were committed to play to feed and play some proper football. And uh, I think out of maybe a little bit of desperation trying to get a goal before the half, they've been sort of uh, resorting to the long ball as we see here again. But up until now, I think UConn, especially in that last spell of play, uh, were pretty well set up defensively. The shape was very nice. Um, and they had, uh, you know, eight players behind the ball. So uh, some good defensive work from UConn, especially as of late. Yeah, that back line of four doing a perfect job playing together. This one takes a deflection out for a Mustangs throw. More changes coming. This time the Huskies as Evelard will come off. She will give way to Kess Elmore, the freshman from Liverpool, England. Elmore... She's been outstanding this season. Actually leads her side in goals scored. Elmore, five goals, 11 points. Which is absolutely dangerous going forward, the Scouser. Thornton. That was a great idea there and brilliant hustle there from SMU. Looking up for Bishop. It's a nice support one there from Thornton. Ashmi had it taken away. Now the other way. Good hustle. Brilliant tackle in the midfield. Fortunately couldn't get help from her defensive partner. Elmore looking for help to the top of the box. It goes. She was looking for Spillane. It was a good ball. Again, we're seeing just another example of SMU. You know, they want to get forward so bad. But they need to have that positional and defensive responsibility. As we're going to see here, this is a nice tackle in midfield. Fortunately, goes straight to a UConn player. That's great hustle. And took it away from Spillane. Made her way all the way up the field to get involved in the attack. And it was a, it was a decent counterattack there from UConn, and uh, SMU were caught out. They're lucky to get away with that one. Just over seven minutes remaining in the first half. SMU pressing, looking for the equalizer before the break. Oates, senior from California, has it knocked away. Elmore. Seen a lot of the ball and has only been on the field a few moments. Good ball to the far side. That was a brilliant crossfield ball from Elmore. 
I love the vision there. Great look. It's a ball to no one there. That's a scary touch there for SMU. And Thompson came off the side of her foot, not the play she was looking to make. Had to go retrieve it herself. Warren Harrington, the senior from Katy, just outside of Houston, taken down. No whistle, just a throw in for UConn. Coach Tantiris, a few words for Keegan's before her throw. Again, I think just in that instance, a little bit more patience needed. It's a bit of an obvious option there that she took. Very direct play from both teams, neither really slowing things up, waiting for reinforcements, both just trying to get forward as quickly as possible and to little success. Absolutely. Usually the simplest pass is the best pass. You can't always get a, a direct ball over the top to break down the defense. Sometimes it takes 10, 12, 15 passes. Long throw from Keegan's. Mustangs unable to control it. Five minutes remaining in the first half. For the time being, looking like UConn wants to add an insurance goal before the break. Into the box, Brown with a great save, having to come out and scoop it up. That's good goalkeeping from Brown because that was a very dangerous ball put in. She had an attacking runner, right, two of them at least, right around her. So good goalkeeping there. We're going to see her here. Sure-handed gather. That was actually a great ball in, but again, just nice goalkeeping there from Brown. Able to get underneath it and secured it. Could not allow a rebound in that instance. Offer the big boot the other way, but into touch. There's only four minutes left. SMU really need to sort of Get some kind of momentum going into halftime. They'd really like a goal here. Cope. This is the patience I like to see. Don't hoof it forward. There we go. Nice, steady possession. Let the ball do the work. SMU doing a good job. And then just as we say that, that ball into the mixer. Lucky they're able to come up with it. You know, it's a bit cliche. Uh, but sometimes you got to go back in order to go forward. Gordon loses her footing. Egan's looking for Elmore. And the free kick for SMU. Thornton able to win it. Now we'll see if the Mustangs can turn it into anything. That was Tool with a little bit of uh, aggressive, a little over aggressiveness there in midfield. And it looked to hoof this ball forward, loft it into the box. Sort of pray that it lands to the right person. Haley Thompson will take it, making sure everyone is set before she puts boot to ball. Nicely taken, dangerous, and that one over the top. Fell fortuitously right to Oates, and the senior unable to put it in. Well, Claire Oates, that was a very dangerous opportunity, and she'll be ruining that miss. It's actually a decent ball in, and UConn don't deal with it, and it falls, again, as you said, fortuitously right to Oates' feet. Unfortunately, just can't put it on frame. Looked to be a sure goal. Senior from Long Beach, California. The best opportunity she has had all match. Over the crossbar, and it stays one to nothing, Huskies. I like the pressure SMU are pouring forward here. 
really trying to gain some momentum. They're doing a good job at just putting pressure on UConn. And they can see the corner. Corner. That's good. Hand, that's good work down the right hand side. The Mustangs had three corners in the first three minutes of this match. Unfortunately, two of them never found their way into play. They haven't had the quality of service up until now. Let's see what they can do with this opportunity. Thompson over to take it. Just needs to give her team a chance, put this one into a dangerous area. He cleared away. That one found itself with a Mustang momentarily, but well defended by UConn. This thing is so freaking sticky, it gets stuck in points. Less than a minute now remaining in the first half. If you're UConn, you will certainly be content to go into the break leading one to nothing. trying to force another ball forward. That's never going to give UConn any trouble. Ten, Back nine, to Brown with 10 eight, seconds remaining in the seven, first half. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That'll do it for the first 45 minutes. UConn leading SMU one to nothing. The Mustangs have never beaten the Huskies. 45 minutes away from making it seven in a row in this contest. Evelard, the lone goal in the first 45 minutes for the home team. Rolling your thoughts in the first half. It was a hard-fought match. You know, both these teams uh, sort of maybe trying to force balls forward. It might be, you know, sort of their, their just desire to get three points in this one. Uh, UConn having a couple of guilt-edged opportunities. SMU with one at the very end there. Uh, so, you know, UConn capitalizing on their chance, which wasn't even really their best chance of the half. Uh, but they're up 1-0. So we'll see what kind of halftime talk both teams get uh, going into the second half. We now go down to the sideline to Scott, who's standing by with UConn head coach Lynn Santiris. All right, thank you very much. And, Coach, you and I talked before the game, and we talked about your young players and kind of learning how to win. Got a seventh-minute goal today from a freshman set up by a sophomore, uh, Evelard from Spillane. What did you like about that play? Obviously the goal, but how did the setup look? I think um, we're, we were a little bit slow at the beginning, and I think we got the momentum, and it was a good counter. Uh, we got it, and uh, we, we look at times, we look dangerous, but, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a long way to go. Uh, we got to defend a little bit better. Um, we got to, uh, we should not give corners because that's, that's where they're dangerous at. And uh, we should be tighter, tighter uh, on the player with the ball. Uh, we, we should be okay. I mean, uh, we, we keep in the ball better as the half went on and we're able to attack and be dangerous that's what we're looking maybe if we get another goal it will be what we want all right thank you coach all right guys back to you one to nothing at the break UConn leading SMU Emily Evelard the lone goal will have the second half when we return to stores after this on the American Digital Network Tuning in to this special edition of The Rise, the conference released an important announcement today, and that is the addition of women's lacrosse beginning in 2019. The six-team league will be comprised of current conference members Cincinnati, UConn, ECU, and Temple, as well as Florida and Vanderbilt as affiliate members. The American becomes the 16th Division I conference to sponsor women's lacrosse, and it is the first sport in addition to the conference since its reinvention five years ago. So let's get to know the teams that will be competing in the spring of 2019. Cincinnati added women's lacrosse as a varsity sport in 2007 and began its first season of competition a year later. 
The Bearcats are led by six-year head coach Gina Oliver, a three-time All-American at Ohio State. UConn first began playing women's lacrosse in 1997. The Huskies are coached by Katie Woods, who is entering her eighth season on the Storrs campus. A two-time Big East Coach of the Year honoree, Woods is the program's all-time winningest coach with 73 victories. Former North Carolina standout and Duke assistant coach Amanda Barnes is set to lead ECU in its first season of competition in 2018. The Pirates begin their first year of intercollegiate competition next season after the addition of women's lacrosse to its sports roster in March of 2016. Meanwhile, Temple has a storied history in women's lacrosse dating back to its first season in 1975. The Owls have earned 17 NCAA championship berths, winning national titles in 1984 and 88. Current head coach Bonnie Rosen, a 2010 U.S. Lacrosse Hall of Fame inductee, has won 165 during her career, including 97 in her 11 seasons at the helm of the Temple program. Florida has made seven NCAA championship appearances since it began playing women's lacrosse in 2010. The Gators advanced to the national semifinals in 2012 and have won three consecutive Big East crowns. Amanda O'Leary, who has guided Florida since the program's inception, coached at Yale from 1993 to 2007. Her 293 career victories ranks fifth all-time in Division I women's history. And last but certainly not least, Vanderbilt's first season of competition was in 1996. Head coach Kathy Sweezy is entering her 21st season as head coach of the Commodores. She has led Vanderbilt to six NCAA tournament appearances, including a trip to the national semifinals in 2004. The conference will conduct its first women's lacrosse championship in 2019 at a site and date still to be determined. The league will also receive an automatic bid into the NCAA championship. For more information, head to theamerican.org. Whether it's superstition or team tradition, the SMU women's soccer team has some pretty fun pregame rituals. As a team, before every game in the locker room, we listen to the same uh, three songs to get us pumped up, and it's right before we go out on the field for the game. Everyone plays a big part in before game day, getting everyone pumped up. Uh, Harrington, as well as senior team, ca team captain. Um, plays a big role in that and everyone works together and just pumps up each other. So before each game we read a motivational poster that's uh, written in our locker room and the last lines are play the game, make, make it, it count. count. We do this and then coach comes in and then we go out. Before each game Katie and I Norma tech together and um, we also take a game day selfie. While the Mustangs didn't have the start they were hoping for in conference play, they are relying on their team chemistry and bond to get them back on track in the final games of the season. This year, this team has a really strong team chemistry and everyone's super close. We're all best friends, and um, which definitely helps on the field and off the field because you can tell on the field that we know how to communicate with each other and that definitely helps our game. As well as having great team chemistry, this year we also have a lot of great talent, uh, some young talent as well as some you know, senior players that are really making a difference. And so I think that's really gonna help us be successful in our last few games. Okay, so me and Mary play center back together. So before each half, we give each other like a handshake and hug each other and say, I love you as a last thing to just <laughs> know that we have each other's back. <laughs> we always have each other's back. It's just a little last moment like, no matter what happens on the field, we have each other's back. As conference play really takes off these last five games of the season, the team's dynamics will truly be tested. For Campus Connect, this is SMU's Emma K. Pugh. Thanks for tuning in to our Wednesday edition of The Rise featuring all things Olympic sports. Hope you're having a great day. I'm Haley Outen. Let's kick off the show out on the pitch, taking a close look at women's soccer. UCF continues to lead the way in the American with 16 points and an unblemished 5-0-1 record. USF is not far behind with 15 points, and Cincinnati, while undefeated at 3-0-1, is tied for third in league play with Memphis with 10 points. The Knights took home three conference honors this week and were led offensively by Morgan Ferreira yet again. Ferreira scored nine points last week. Yes, you heard that right, nine points, and led UCF to a pair of 4-0 shutouts against Houston and SMU. 
The Knights are number eight in the United Soccer Coaches rankings this week and have not lost a match since the season opener at then number four, South Carolina. We would also like to send a big congrats to Memphis head coach Brooks Monaghan, who won his 100th career conference game this past week in the Tigers' senior day victory over UConn. Monaghan has led the Memphis program for 18 years. Congratulations, coach. Don't forget to check out our game of the week, SMU at UConn. The Mustangs are tied for second in conference play in assists per game, while the Huskies ranked fourth in the American in goals against average. You can tune into this one at 7 p.m. Eastern Thursday, live and for free on YouTube. In men's soccer, UConn and USF remain atop the conference standings with nine points apiece. And lucky for us, we'll get to see them square off on the American Digital Network Friday. The Bulls are also undefeated at home this season, while the Huskies are 2-0 in their conference road games this year. UConn leads the American in goals against average saves and shutouts. USF, meanwhile, has not lost a league match since October 1st of 2016 at Cincinnati. Since 2015, the Bulls are 14-2-2 in the American. Make sure you tune in on Friday. The top spot in the conference standings is on the line. You can catch this one at 8 p.m. Eastern on the American Digital Network. SMU, who ranks third in the American standings with six points, is up eight spots in the United Soccer rankings at number 17. They earned their second conference win of the season, a 2-1 to -one victory at Temple last Saturday, and a pair of Mustangs, Jared Rice and Mauro Cicero, were named to the conference's weekly honor roll. In volleyball, all roads lead to Kansas this week as our two undefeated teams, SMU and Wichita State, square off for the top spot in the American. Both teams are 6-0 in league play and have met just three times prior to Friday's upcoming match. Wichita, who is number 22 in the latest AVCA national rankings, leads the all-time series between the two teams 2-1. However, they have not met since the 2012 season. We would also like to give a shout-out to Taylor Horsfall, who was tabbed the American Defensive Player of the Week after setting a school record with 44 digs in a five-set win over UCF last Friday, a mark that ranked second all-time in conference history. The sophomore leads all-conference back row players with 7.12 digs per set in league play this year. The ECU women's golf team won its second tournament of the fall season on Tuesday, carding a cumulative score of 17 under par to win the Pinehurst Challenge. Playing on Pinehurst number one, the Pirates fired a closing round of seven under, pulling away from the field after entering the day with a one-shot lead. Four Pirates finished their three rounds under par, led by Dorothea Forbridge and Carly Cox, both of whom shot five under for the tournament and tied for fifth. Up next for ECU is a trip to Louisville, Kentucky for the Cardinal Cup on October 21st and 22nd. The conference announced its first set of swimming and diving weekly awards to start the 2017-18 season, and Cincinnati took home three of the four honors while sweeping the diving accolades. Congratulations to all of our award winners this week, including SMU's Matea Samardich, who earned the Women's Swimmer of the Week nod. That's about it for this week's episode of The Rise. Make sure to check back with us later today for a special Olympic sports announcement. You won't want to miss it. Have a great day, everybody. The UConn women's soccer team recently got a boost as their starting goalkeeper, senior TCU transfer Courtney Hofer, was finally cleared to play. We talked to Hofer about her transfer, her injury, and what it's been like to finally get back out on the field. Hofer came to UConn for her senior season, transferring from TCU, but as a Farmington, Connecticut native, she's more comfortable than ever. To be at home, it, it's really important and it's really cool for me because a lot of people get to see me play that would have never gotten to see me play before. But adjusting to a new team wasn't her only challenge. Hofer was sidelined for the beginning of the Husky season, missing their first nine regular season games with concussion-like symptoms. She and her coaches both had to cope with the injury. Yeah, she was obviously chomping at the bit to get back, which is understandable, um, but making sure that she was ready so when she did come back, it wasn't for one game and then having to take three games off. It's one of my bigger strengths is being able to lead and to not be able to feel like I had a big impact on the team was really wasn't, wasn't easy. Now that she's back, Hofer is able to provide not only her talent, but also her voice. As she said herself, communication is one of her many skills and her teammates have taken notice. She's a very prevalent voice. You can hear it at the half line. Like She even directs me a lot of the time. And it just takes off a lot of pressure from our defenders. She's loud in that, which I think helps everyone a lot. Um, she's always talking, 
to like especially the back six she's always communicating if we have time if we need to get the ball out so it's helpful having her back there but hofer's game is not limited to her vocal skills she's a well-rounded player and she credits this partially to one of her childhood coaches who just so happens to be a u.s soccer legend first person that comes to my mind right now is tony DeChico. Um, i played for tony when i was a really little kid and he told me I was going to be a goalkeeper one day, and that was in the days where I used to cry when they put me in goal because I hated it so much because I like playing out on the field. But I think, uh, especially with Tony passing away this summer, I really, really think about him a lot this season and how much of an impact he's had on my game. More than anything, Hofer is just glad to be back playing the game she loves. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, I've been playing since I was really little, and it's just this is what my, I'm passionate about, and to be back out there, it's just I feel like I'm back at home. For Campus Connect, from UConn, I'm Brandon Carney. Halftime at Maroney Stadium in stores. UConn leading the visiting SMU Mustangs one to nothing. Moments away from the start of the second half, we head down to the sideline. Scott Studikoff will be standing by with the visitors, Chris Petroselli. But first, Roland, get your thoughts on the first half. It looked like SMU... Well, they were dominated at the beginning of the half. They dominated at the end of the half, but in between, it was all Huskies. It was all Huskies, and, uh, you know, you, you like to see them capitalize on sort of their guilt edge chances that they had. Yeah, for both teams, really, you know, SMU had a break early on. They had a few corner opportunities. Uh, the Huskies had uh, some back post opportunities. Um, so, you know, really UConn, like I said before, took advantage of the one uh, sort of opportunity that wasn't even the best so far in this first half. So I think SMU need to do a little bit more of what they were doing at the end of the first half, sort of keeping possession, try to get the ball in the back of the net. Here are the standings, the current standings in the American Athletic Conference, UCF, USF, one and two. A big game, obviously, for UConn. UConn, the three points, that would move them up even with Temple. Houston, well, they will be taking on the same Huskies on Sunday, the second match against the teams from Texas. So we now head down to the skyline. Scott Sudikoff standing by with the visitors head coach, Scott Petros Chris Petroselli. All right, thank you very much, Kit. And uh, Coach, able to get four corner kicks in that first half, a couple of uh, good looks at set pieces, not able to finish. What do you think you need to do here in the second half to find that goal? Yeah, we, we, we got to create more chances, you know. We we weren't really able to break them down, you know, and uh, I think maybe we can get the ball wide and, and maybe get something off of a cross. Um, certainly, you know, we're, we're dangerous on these corners and set pieces, but two of the four corners we took ended up off the field. So, you know, we got to be a little cleaner on some of this stuff. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, guys, back up to you. Thanks, Scott. Rowan, you heard Coach Petroselli saying the same things that you said You've got to take advantage of the set pieces. They had some corners in the first half, but Mustangs unable to put it in the back of the net. Absolutely. He also said they need to be a little bit cleaner. You know, it's like I said, it's not for the lack of skill that either team has really uh, not found much possession. You know, uh, it's really been sort of uh, not keeping their focus, I think, and just sort of resulting the hoop and the ball forward. Both teams have the ability to keep possession and sort of be dangerous going forward. They just need to let the ball do the work. SMU has never beaten UConn. The Huskies 6-0 against the Mustangs, 45 minutes away from making it 7-0 in this American Athletic Conference rivalry. The visitors in the white, the home team, well, in the pink tonight for Breast Cancer Awareness Month and leading 1-0 the goal from Yamile Evelard, the assist from Aaron Spillane, and that is all that separates the two teams. Again, we're seeing some high pressure from SMU. Fortunately for UConn, they come off of that and are able to get on a break here. UConn going the other way. Good job dropping defensively by the Mustangs. That was a great ball in, actually. It was very dangerous. SMU barely deal with it. SMU defense has been lacking at times throughout this season. Their offense has been able to score, but the defense has let them down in a few matches. They've got to find that offense. Spillane looking that time, trying to find Elmore. Kess Elmore, the leader for the Huskies with five goals on the season, the native of Liverpool, England. 
Came off the bench in the first half, starts here in the second. See the pressure being applied by UConn. Muskies would like nothing better than to find that insurance goal early here in the second half. Especially being at home and again, never having uh, lost to SMU. I want to keep that pride over the Mustangs. In six previous matches, UConn with five wins, one draw against SMU. SMU 0-3-1 this year in the American Athletic Conference. 5-5-3 five, five, and three overall. UConn overall a losing record at 4-6-3, and three, but more importantly, they are 2-2 two two in conference play. Hoping to make it 3-2 and two after a win here tonight, but a long ways from that. Wine's been pointing to the top of the six-yard box. The goal kick. You mentioned SMU returning nine starters from a year ago, a team that finished with a 6-2-1 and one record in conference play. They... Receives an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. First time they were in the tournament in 10 years. But does not appear if they're going to be able to duplicate that feat in 2017. Thornton has it knocked away. And Siguera that time, the right back, able to come up with it. Outside, Spillane cutting around the defender. Excuse me, that was actually Bile. UConn doing a good job retaining possession. Making the easy pass is something you harped on in the first half. Right now they're keeping possession fairly well, and just as I say that. That is the inevitability that is the broadcaster's curse. As soon as you make a compliment, all things like that tend to happen. It just seems like both teams are trying to make something happen right now. Every single player when they're on the ball is trying to make something happen, trying to make something happen, trying to make the, uh, you know, the killer ball. <laughs> When really they just need to sort of be patient, keep possession, you know, t tire off the opposing team with ball movement, not necessarily with actual physical running. You know, obviously there has to be nice movement off the ball, but as we see here, like just some nice ball movement, making sure they have width. Thornton outside of Thorpe sends it in. They also need to have a quality service. That was a decent opportunity to put a dangerous cross in, and they don't take advantage of that. Blair Thorpe, the junior from Frisco, and able to put it into the box. I mentioned the poor service. We've seen it in set pieces, and now that cross off the mark and offer simply the goal kick. We love to see players, you know, be ambitious and, you know, want to make something happen for their team and their teammates. But as I said before, you know, sometimes the simplest pass is the best pass, actually mostly. A fine line between doing everything you can but still playing within yourself. Absolutely. Well, you know, every not every ball can be a beautiful, you know, cross field ball like Andrea Pirlo, you know. We got a whole Monday night real. We can't all be Pirlo. <laughs> this is unfortunately true. I think US soccer fans have learned that this week, if nothing else. But I digress. <laughs> Let's not get into that. Still hurting. <laughs> The Ponies with the throw on the far side. It's a big run from a center back. Right up through the middle. Good ball, but just too much on it. Hoffer wisely off her line. She read it perfectly. 
That is good goalkeeping and not a bad ball in. Trying to slip through, through that diagonal run. Offer hasn't been tested. I'd like to see SMU take a few shots on goal. See what the senior goalkeeper has as she's been rested this entire match, hasn't been forced into anything. Again, another dangerous run into the midfield from a center back. It appears right now that's where the space is for SMU. Everyone wide, and UConn doing a good job getting their defenders out wide as well. It's actually a good ball over the top, and fortunately for SMU, they're able to take control of that, but good defensive work there from UConn to concede a throw. As sent out into touch, great defending that time. Keegan's And that shot from the top of the box to the near post. Hoffer had it covered the whole time. I don't mind that uh, that uh, decision to take a shot. Again, you know, if you don't shoot, you can't score. They were in the 18. We're going to see it here. That's a decent turn there. They were just out of the 18, That, mind you. I'd like to see her maybe try to curl that far post maybe. Cooley wins the throw for SMU. <laughs> Sierra Bile back defending. One thing I've been impressed with with the Huskies, they do a very good job defending as a unit, getting everyone back, taking care of those defense, those defensive responsibilities. Yeah, usually the defensive shape is uh, pretty tight. You know, you see them sort of defending as a team, which is something obviously that you'd like to see. That's part of the reason why they're still up 1-0. Now go down to the sideline to check in with the third member of our crew, Scott Sudikoff. Thank you very much. Uh, just over near the SMU sideline and listening to Coach Petroselli, and he's really urging uh, Claire Oates in that midfield to go up, join the offensive rush, get involved near the box. Also looking at right back Jessica Cooley to get involved more in the offense. And, you know, so obviously in the first 10 minutes or so of the second half, SMU really want to force the issue, try to find that equalizer here early in this second half, and then in the end hopefully look for a victory at the end of this contest. Guys, back Thanks, to you. Scott. You saw Coach Petroselli, his assistants, Nicole Nelson, Matt Cosgrave, trying to get those backs involved, get them to start the offense, especially that right and left back, get them forward. The shot pressed over the top, Hoffer. Did she get a fingertip to it? She did. And the corner coming for the Mustangs. That was Blair Thorne there with the shot. It looks like she has all kinds of time at the top of the 18. Looks like Hoffer did get a bit of a touch on it. That was a nice rip from Blair Thorne. It's some, nice, some decent pressure from SMU. And the local product from Frisco, home of FC Dallas, the MLS franchise there in the Metroplex, one of the better academies, if not the best academy in Major League Soccer. The corner won by Thorpe. Now Thompson over to take it. Good service into the back of the net, and SMU has found the equalizer from what else? A corner kick, and it is one-to-one. -one. They have plenty of corners so far. And they get a great opportunity to sort of score off of another corner, and they take this opportunity this time. And it was actually a nice header, some, you know, a subpar, let's say, marking in the box. Catherine, UConn. Catherine Heron, the sophomore defender from Ontario, Comes up, able to get in front of Hoffer and the equalizer. And this is going to be a very entertaining 35 minutes left in this one. It is now 1-1 between SMU and UConn. Well, they do a good job at crowding Hoffer out. You know, they, they really put bodies in and around her and forced uh, UConn to put bodies there as well. So it really forced her off of that ball. And it was a decent ball to the near post. Unfortunately for SMU, a Mustang head got on the end of it, and it's 1-1. It's a new game. Coach Petroselli said it. You said it, Roland, taking advantage of those set pieces, maybe a height advantage as well for SMU, able to get in front of Hoffer. And the equalizer coming off the corner. You know that this 
Mustang team has to be looking forward to the remainder of this one. They're looking for their first conference victory of the year. Will it come tonight on the road in stores? One thing about that delivery as well, it had nice pace on it. It was whipped into that near post, so it didn't give any defenders a chance to attack it. There it is one more time, and just in front of Hoffer. Hoffer tried to get over the back of Heron, but Heron doing a good job boxing her out, so to speak, and able to nod it in for the corner for the goal. Absolutely, that was a great job by Heron. Trying to get a hit on that at all costs. Now the Huskies the other way, looking to retake the lead, but the header not on target. You've seen SMU be the aggressor so far in this second half. It's probably a decent halftime talk. You see them tie up the game early on in the second half. Making some changes as Evelard scored the goal for UConn in the first half, coming back on. Now Evelard, a heavy tackle and free kick for the Huskies. Well, heavy tackle was right. That was actually a decent turn attempt by Evelard. Nice bit of skill there. That was a goal scorer, Catherine Heron, committing the foul. I'm going to see the replay here. Good first touch, beautiful turn, and a clear and obvious foul there from Heron. We've not seen a yellow card thus far. Certainly make a case for that one. SMU just on there, just defense sixes and sevens there, trying to clear the ball going off at of, uh, one of their teammates. And Brown come out, comes out and gathers. Seeing good goalkeeping from both Brown and her counterpart Hoffer this evening. Outside, good ball around the defender. Evelard lurking, looking for service. Tackle sends it out. UConn will have the throw. That was a good defensive cover for Meehan there. We're going to see it here. Beautiful tackle. Gets all the ball. Coming to the rescue for her left back. Flag is up for offside. Huskies unable to get back on before the ball was played. Offside. Well, UConn just kind of cruising along. They found the early goal. So why it's so important to find that insurance goal. But instead, it is one to one after the header from Heron off the corner kick. And you got to say this this game pro probably means a bit more to UConn than SMU in terms of going forward this season. We'll see what kind of desire they show in the second half to retake the lead. Thornton. Cooley back to Heron. Thornton able to control it inbounds. Quick throw taken by the Huskies. Segura has some room. It's probably one of the few, first few times that we've seen her get forward, and she's got pace. I'd like to see her get forward uh, a little bit more often. And a sophomore left back from New Jersey. See her here. She's very athletic, and that's a nice little defensive play there. Very athletic. She's got tons of pace on her. Haven't seen her take a bad touch yet. I've seen the recovery speed. Another example right there. See if she can utilize that and get the offense started for UConn. Allred able to ride out the tackle. Back to Oates. 
Goes to Allred looking for the return pass behind her. The idea was there. That's got to be a first time ball. It's got to be a nice one too. Takes a little bit too, mu too much time to get that ball back to Oates. Now UConn looking to go the other way and Cooley doing a good job able to get back and knocks it out. A free kick for UConn. So we own the sophomore wins it. The center midfielder hadn't seen a lot of her in this match, hasn't had a, a lot of the ball. It's going to be a dangerous opportunity here for UConn. They've had some decent service into the box. Jewel puts that one in nicely, but out it goes. Last touched by a Husky. Just under 27, 28 minutes, I should say, remaining in this match. And tied at one. Mustangs taking the opportunity to make a pair of changes. As they will bring Blair Thorpe and Hannah Allred off. Haley Bishop coming back on. Applying the pressure. And wins the throw for the Huskies. Must have been very impressed with the freshman, the goal scorer, Yamily Evelyn. Not just her offensive prowess, but the way she plays defense tries to win it back every time UConn loses possession. Well, definitely every time either one of the SMU center backs are on the ball, she's trying to apply pressure and win possession back. Sometimes difficult to get forwards to buy in to trying to get it back. Not the case with Evelyn. Evelard doing work defensively and offensively. And all the way back to Hoffer it goes. Oh, good ball back to Vince Aguera. Final ball, as has been the case frequently this evening, just off mo uh, the mark. The goalkeeper from Brown making her box serves. And Segura. She's in decent chemistry down the left-hand side with Vince Aguirre in her left wing there. Playing some nice one-twos. Yeah, that's time trying to take it back from Bile. Bile was leaving it there, but well read. The Mustang's able to get a touch to it. Evelard tried to flick it onto herself into space. The Oates rather heron there. Hit a pushing and shoving. Oates looking for the call, didn't get it. Hoffer comes out to take it. Could have been a very dangerous defensive mistake there. Well, Hoffer taking her time. Getting the troops situated before putting it back into play. Big leg from Hoffer onto the Mustang side. Bile. Heron there to knock it away. Bile looking for a teammate. Finds Evelard on the throw. Evelard. I think she spun herself out. 
I like her effort there. She's trying to do, that was actually a decent turn. But it was obviously good defensive work there from SMU, but she's trying to be tricky. She's trying to, you know, create some space for herself. So I like the effort. Seeing the speed of Yamali Evelard, if she's able to get any space, but SMU's done a very good job after her first goal. They've certainly keyed on her, not giving her many opportunities. Definitely when Evelard tries to be technical, usually when she's on the ball, as we see a foul here, obviously from SMU. Everlord likes to be technical, you know, she's got a good first touch on her. Uh, but we're seeing, you know, SMU really play tight to her and not giving her the opportunity to turn. Jewel puts it in after Nashmi commits the foul. Evelard looking to turn, Evelard shot deflected. The flag <laughs> up for offside. <laughs> Head down to the skyline, the sideline to check in with Scott. All right, thank you very much, Kit. And standing by here at the UConn sideline, and kind of you know it's a it's a different dynamic for this UConn team. Two associate head coaches, Margaret Rodriguez, of course a UConn product, '99 graduate, and then Zach Shaw, also an associate head coach. Both of them very vocal on the sideline, very vocal on the sideline. You know, Coach Santiris, you know, turns around and discusses things and you know, a lot of back and forth between them so a lot of involvement from you know, again two associate head coaches on the staff for Len Santier certainly something you don't see really in any sport thanks Scott no that's exactly right having two great coaches like coach Rodriguez and coach Shaw what a luxury that is and coach Santiris obviously don't need to talk about what he's been able to do over 500 victories in his career as a head coach the former Yukon Husky himself. Brown with the save, and Brown has been tested in the last few minutes. Kyle taking the shot, and you just feel like that Yukon offense starting to ramp up bit by bit. Just a little bit here in the last couple of minutes. He put a dangerous ball in that Brown dealt with, and then the shot there by Bile that was on frame. I like to see her do that a little bit more often, get forward. Try to take that let that right back from SMU one on one, get in on that dangerous right foot and get some get some shots on frame. Vinciguerra looking for Evelard. I really like this trio that we're starting to see here between Bile, Evelard, and Vinciguerra back. Now that she is moving forward offensively, something you were asking for, UConn looking more dangerous. Absolutely, especially with the athleticism on that left hand side with Bile and Evelard. It can really cause some trouble for SMU. Cooley. Sent back the other way. And Segura reads the long ball, and now she's going to go to the opposite field. Right now, ball just ping ponging back and forth. It's a good play there to keep possession for SMU. Evelard with a great tackle, takes it away from Oates. Finds itself back with Oates. Up to Thorpe. The tackle coming from behind, wins it back, but again, the long ball just giving it away. So back and forth we go. Twenty minutes remaining in the match, tied at one. UConn, they found the opener. Emily Evelard, service from Spillane, made it one to nothing. And then in the second half, Heron off the corner was able to head it in. The shot from distance, no trouble for Hoffer. That's unfortunate there that she took a shot. It was from a little too far out. That was never going to trouble Hoffer, and she did have options in attack. Bile looking for Evelard. Evelard, again, that patented spin we've seen so often this evening. I love her attitude. She really tries to express herself out there. She's a technical player. She's trying to show the flair out there. I like it. 
The Mustangs making some changes. Just over 19 minutes remaining. They're looking to get some fresh legs on, looking for the winner in 90. Do not want to have to go to extra time. Kristen Vinciguerra to take the free kick. Taken short, looking for Evelard. Evelard spinning a defender on her back, loses possession. SMU have done a great job at staying tight to Evelard, not letting her turn. The Huskies committing the foul, the free kick. Yamily Evelard, the 5'8 freshman from Valley Stream, New York. You see the foul on Heron. Rolling still plenty of time for the game winner. What do you want to see from each one of these teams to get the victory in the 90 minutes? Probably just some more clinical finishing, really. You know, a bit more patience on the ball. Again, trying not to rush things. Uh, both teams have had sort of half chances going forward. Um, I'd say SMU were doing a good job to sort of stifle any any real scary def any any real scary offensive attacks from uh, from UConn. Um, I think so far SMU have maybe had a couple date more dangerous opportunities. So they really need to finish those. This one being one. The whistle had blown the flag up for offside. That time Haley Bishop, the sophomore, thought she had an opportunity. Another set piece opportunity and those are where the chances have come in this match for SMU. Well, at times, neither defense have been able to clear their lines. And, you know, whenever you, whenever you have the ball bouncing around in your 18-yard box, it's never, <laughs> it's never a good thing. Ben Seguera. Great play. Able to keep it in play was Leone. Right now, UConn the aggressor playing quicker. They want the ball. Evelard with some space. Evelard still rides out a tackle. Evelard, no room for the shot, finally takes it. Brown comes up with a save. You saw the reaction from Evelard, unhappy. I think she was looking for a teammate to come into the picture. We see her here. That's actually a good opportunity here. It's a decent shot and an even better save there from Brown, but finally Avalard is able to turn and run at defenders, which is what she wants to do. You see what she can do there. That was a good shot. She just needs a couple more opportunities, and she, I think she'll take advantage of another one. The defenders have read the scouting reports. They know about the speed of Avalard giving her a wide berth, maybe too wide of a berth, is now the Huskies electing to make some changes. Avalar just not afraid to run at defenders. In fact, she that's where she thrives. What you want in a forward, someone who is never afraid, somebody with a short memory, always continuing to go. Evelard was on the back hip of Heron, but couldn't continue the run. Now Cooley coming up. Cooley. Good ball up to Bishop. Bishop over and back for offside. Fifteen minutes remaining in the 90. Yukon fans doing the Viking clap as Iceland has qualified for their first ever World Cup. The smallest country population-wise to ever qualify for a men's World Cup. Just over 330,000 people the size of Corpus Christi, Texas. When you put it that way, that's incredible. The amount of talent that has come out of that small country. You're exactly right about that. They Playing are on ice. <laughs> yeah. UConn hoping to find the game winner in the next 15 minutes. The fans 
Doing the best to make Maroney Stadium a difficult place for the visitors to come. Always about the home field advantage. Over the top, good ball. Touch just not there. Good tracking back defensively for UConn. Fleet plays it in. Another ball across the top of the six-yard box and finally cleared away. And what more do you want? It's a beautiful ball again across the six-yard box that wasn't dealt with by Hoffer. Bishop backtracking, couldn't win it back, and now the Mustangs have it. Finally cleared out of the back. Chaotic play from both teams. All it takes is that one touch. Referee says play on. This Opportunity. Nice, nice play from UConn here. Into the box and just wide, pressed wide. Brown got a touch to it. And you see the reaction of Cooley. Well, it looked like that was a shot on goal. From our angle, it looked like it was going in and a decent save by Brown. We're going to see it again here. It was a good build-up play there. That's Elmore taking a shot, and it is a great save by Brown. Good reflex save. And it goes out for a corner for UConn. Elmore looking for her sixth goal of the year. Instead, Brown comes up with a huge save, but now the corner. Finally cleared away. That one bouncing around. Vince Aguera came up to get ahead to it. throw to UConn what a chance that was but what a save from Brown absolutely it was a world-class save and again Elmore there on the ball she's just fearless in possession and not afraid to take a shot on goal that was a nice little turn there to get away from space trying to find Ellie uh, Evelard on the right hand side could not get it to Evelard like to see Elmore with more possession hasn't had the ball a lot here is Hoach shakes off the would-be tackle. Back to Hoffer. UConn playing with real purpose. Seems like we're is swinging back into their, into their way. You know how important three points would be to move them up in the conference standings. Questionable tackles here, but you can't come up with it. Referee letting play continue. It is physical, as you might expect in a conference matchup. Muskie's last to touch it. The Mustangs will have the throw after the substitution. We mentioned the last time these two teams met, there was a conference championship on the line. And, well, UConn won it. Rachel Hill, the alone goal in that one. The Huskies one to nothing victors a year ago to claim that trophy as the American Athletic Conference women's soccer champion. They were the regular season and the tournament champion a year ago. But a bit of a letdown in 2017 for Coach Lynn Santiris' side. Likewise, same could be said for the Mustangs. They were in the NCAA tournament last year as an at-large bid, and they brought nine starters back from last year but still have not found a win in conference play in 2017. It's hard to peg just why they've done so poorly so far this season. As you said, nine starters come back. It has been the teams from Florida who have been putting their stamp on things so far this season in conference play, USF and UCF. And you know, I've had the opportunity to see them play. Two very impressive sides. Absolutely, especially I was especially impressed with uh, Southern Florida USF. 
just tons of skill all over the pitch. They try to play proper football, keep possession. They really pour forward and put, put pressure on their opposition's back line. But they're solid in defense as well. Just a very impressive team overall. A large shot took a deflection in the corner for UConn. Played in and headed away. On that occasion, just that corner not whipped in with enough pace. It was kind of a floating ball. And ultimately, it was dealt with by SMU. Elmore looking to play Evelard through. She was saying that Evelard was obstructed, couldn't continue her run. It was a bit of a hip check, but probably not enough to get a call. Certainly not in a match that has been officiated the way this has been. And it's been even for both sides, but they've certainly let him play. Well, you like to see that sometimes. You don't, you don't like to referee, the referee to sort of interrupt the flow of the play. Free kick taken quickly by SMU. Cooley has a teammate at the top of the box. Back to Cooley. Cooley with some room. Thought about the shot not on frame. I think she was in between two minds of trying to lay it off to a teammate and take the shot. And the result, just a goal kick. It looked like it. That's actually a decent ball over the top. Unfortunately, can't control at the top of the box. Cooley gets on the ball again. And it looks like she was maybe going for a diagonal pass far post. Maybe that's a bit generous on my part. It's actually not a bad ball then if that's what she was going for. Just really no help on that back post there. Offers goal kick flicked on. Tool looking to get in. SMU back. That long ball, the final ball I should say. Again, not on target. UConn out shooting SMU 13 to 8 in this one, but the only stats that matter 1 to 1. Will we be headed to extra time? Or will we find the winner in the next 6 minutes and 45 seconds? And Segura coming up from her left back spot. Oates sends it out. The Huskies with the throw. Vivian Bile hasn't seen a lot of the ball. Chance. And out it goes, corner kick coming, a Husky down and slow to her feet. Good to see Spillane back on. Spillane has been impressive the entirety of this match. Again, another opportunity here from UConn from the corner kick. Bile takes it. Just trying to do a bit too much. Now SMU a chance with the counter, trying to get numbers forward. Well defended by Leone and UConn. That's good tracking back there from UConn. It's a little bit indecisive on that counter attack and it allowed Utah, UConn to sort of recover and win the ball back. Kyle trying to head it on into Evelard. Starting to see the fatigue setting in on both sides with under five minutes remaining. Well, if they're tired, it's in their best interest to score in the next four, four minutes and 40 seconds. Well put. If we do indeed head to extra time, we will see who has more in the tank. And a lot of times that determines the winner. We'll have a 10 minute extra time period. If we are still even at the end of the 10 minutes, we will have a second and final 10 minute extra time period. We will not go to penalty kicks to determine the winner of this match. If we are drawn at the end, 
of the 20 minutes of extra time. The match will end in a draw. Obviously, they knew those overtime periods, a golden goal is in play. Brown comes up. Six previous meetings, UConn, five victories, no losses, one draw against SMU. Cooley. It's been a tale of missed opportunities here for both teams. There have been times where they're pouring forward and sort of have you know, the opportunity to connect one or two passes together. And they squandered almost all of them. They both had chances, notably SMU, from those corner kicks early in the first half. Now UConn going the other way, trying to get numbers. Evelard, oh, great tackle, knocks it away. Heron has been on her all game, playing very tough. Catherine Heron, the sophomore, not just doing a great job defending, also has the lone goal tonight for the Mustangs. Flag stays down. Evelard with an opportunity. File coming in. Evelard with a shot and the goal. Her second of the game. The brace for Yamily Evelard. And it is two to one. UConn, 223 remaining in the match. Well, if anybody deserved a goal today, it was Yamily Evelard. She's worked so hard all match. She's been playing tough. Heron's been on her all game. Uh, being very physical with her, preventing her from turning and doing what she wants to do. But she made a brilliant little diagonal run and beats the offside trap of SMU. We're going to see it here. There's actually a good ball in. The flag stays down. She keeps her composure. She knows Heron's bearing down on her, but she beats Brown to the far post. And it was a beautiful finish there from Evelard. 2-1 to UConn. Let's see if they can hold it and get the three points for the rest of this match with only two minutes and 20 seconds left. The freshman, Evelard, with the brace. A goal in the first half, now a goal in the second half. Will that be the game winner? Is Emily Evelard coming off embraced by the Huskies' sideline? You now with her first goal, the ball kind of just fell right on her head. This one, she had to really work hard to keep her composure in front of goal. Again, Heron, who's been a nightmare for her so far, in this, uh, in this matchup was bearing down on her, closing in very quickly, and she knew it. She was aware of her surroundings, and she, she stuck the ball in the back of the net regardless. Rare that you see a freshman with that kind of calm, cool, and collectedness on the ball. She knew the defender was coming, knew exactly how much time she had, and took the shot at the last second before Heron came to close her down, able to get it by Brown. 90 seconds away from being the game winner. Along with SMU's midfield, I think Evelard has been the most impressive uh, player so far on the pitch as far as technicality goes. She's been a delight to watch so far. Evelard looking to write her name in the history books of this series. As the Huskies look to make it seven wins in eight matches against the Mustangs. Just a lone draw between the two. As SMU needs a goal to send it to extra time or they will stay winless in their series against UConn. Hoffer making sure everyone is in the right spot. Knows that it only takes one second. Got to get the ball upfield. Yukon wisely sends it out into touch. Ten seconds. Yoni up the other way. And that will do it. 
As the clock strikes zero and the Huskies come up with the victory, two to one, the goals from the freshman, Yamali Evelard, what a performance coming back for UConn to get the victory. Well, Evelar just worked so hard this entire game. You know, it was a tale of missed opportunities for both teams, but Evelar had two opportunities. She stuck both of them in the back of the net. Kudos to her. She's very technically gifted, very entertaining to watch. So uh, it was a de deserving win, I think, for UConn today. And for SMU, heartbreaking as they were able to come back to tie the match. They were down one to nothing. They drew it even at one to one, but ultimately did not have enough and are still trying to find their first victory in conference play as we head down to the sideline to check in with Scott. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you and good night. And All right, thank you guys here with Coach Santiris and getting that late goal. Freshman Emily Evelar, two goals here in this game, three in the last two contests for her. Uh, she seems to be the freshman that's uh, stepping up now. Uh, she's coming along. I mean, she needs to, uh, there were other times that she, she doesn't have the experience yet. She's a very good athlete, very skillful player, but she does things that she needs, she needs to improve to know when to do what. And that's, but she's, in, uh, she's a force in there. She's, she's definitely a force. She's been doing really well the last couple of games. And uh, we need a player like that right now. What did you see from your team in that second half? You gave up, you gave up, gave up the equalizing goal and able to fight back though. Yeah, they fight. They, they fight the, the last uh, four or five games when we start on the conference. They fighting, and that's that's all we talk about. We've been working on it, and uh, it's it's good that they they get the results. That's that's a good thing for them. All right, thank you, coach. All right, welcome in now, Emily. Yeah, Emily Evelard here. Both goals, uh, the game winner. That's three goals in the last two games for you. Uh, here this season, uh, coming in as a freshman to this such a good program in UConn, have you felt any pressure uh, trying to uh, keep the, uh, the the success going? Yeah, I mean the senior class last year they did really well, so there was a lot of high expectations coming in, but I just fought, did as best as I could, and yeah. Uh, I'm here on the sidelines. You're out there on the field, and I'm hearing your coaches just urging you on, get into the box, get into the offense. Is it? Is it something you're just getting still used to here, trying to you know, be a freshman but be such a go-to player? Yeah, I mean, I've always had some type of pressure playing, but, like, they're always on my case, and sometimes it's frustrating, but I know it's, like, coming from their heart because they believe in me, and, like, I like it. Now you've been here for about three-quarters of a season playing in front of this home crowd, uh, a great home field advantage. Uh, it feels nice to now get a win here at home as you've had some struggles earlier this year. Yeah, it feels good, especially the crowd and – the goal patrol cheering us on. I love it. All right. Thank you so much, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Thanks, Scott. And you heard from Coach Lynn Santiris and his star freshman, Yemily Evelard, had the brace. Both goals tonight. UConn stays unbeaten in the series with SMU 2-1. to one. The Huskies on top of the Mustangs. For our entire crew, for my partner Roland Garensway, I'm Kit McConico saying good night. Thank you for joining us tonight from stores, the final UConn on top of SMU 2-1. to one.